So I have a 2004 Ford Expedition that was donated to the shop and it's actually my best uh, condition car that I have but the transmission is bad on it and that's why they donated it. It slips in all forward gears and specifically it has a delayed engagement and I'll show you. But the, so with any diagnosis the first thing you want to do is check fluid and check the condition. So when I first pull this out I'm going to check the condition. I'm going to use a white rag. And I'm actually going to check to see how much soot is on there. And you can see there's a little bit of uh, uh, black soot. Okay. The next one, I'm going to check the level and then I'm going to smell it. So the first thing I do is I'm going to smell this food. And it's, it's fried. I mean, you could tell when you have burnt fluid, you could tell and uh the level was uh is right here uh, right above the cold so the level is fine so what we're experiencing on this uh, expedition is a delayed engagement in gear and then it does slip in four gears so let's go check the delayed engagement So I already made a video that I showed you uh, uh, in the class on when you first shift it through the gears, you check the engagement and the indicator for alignment. So I'm doing that at the same time. So I'm gonna real quickly put it in reverse. And, it, and you can feel it engage and then go zoop. So there is a definite delayed engagement. Put in neutral and I'm making sure it's all aligned and connected. There's drive. Oh, much, uh, that's a delay. Let's go back. Let's go to reverse. So the delay is more in drive. And then we're going to go just two and one and check our alignments with both of these. So we're good. So now we're ready to, we know we have a delayed engagement. Now what we're ready to do is a stall test. So this is a, uh, a printed from all data so what do they check they check the torque converter clutch operation and installation uh, holding ability of the forward clutch uh, reverse clutch the low reverse bands planetary one-way clutch and engine drivability so keep in mind you if you had a misfire or uh, multiple misfires it might feel like a delayed engagement or that the, the transmission is filling and it's a uh, drivability problem. We're ready to do a stall test. I have the parking brake set. I have my wheels chucked. In a school setting, you gotta make sure there's nothing in front of you and nothing behind you and people are away from the car, okay? Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting in each gear and doing wide open throttle uh, with our brake applied and we're going to look at our tachometer the tachometer tells you if it's in spec or not so we're really focusing on a tachometer uh, of this plus the engagement also as we do it in between each stall test we're going to run the engine for like 15 seconds at at least a thousand i always say 2000 rpm the instructions say a thousand and then uh, uh, record the reading so let's go ahead and do this test All right, so let's go ahead and do our stall test. We have my brake pedal depressed. I'm gonna shift it to reverse. I feel that delayed engagement. You can feel it go clonk and then zoom. I'm gonna go ahead and smash the brake pedal, go wide open throttle. And we're, yeah, see, it's starting to slip. There we go, we're holding it. You really don't wanna do it for more than five seconds and then put it in neutral. And then I rev it to 2000 for 15 seconds. and that cools off the torque converter okay so 15 seconds and now i'm going to just shift it to drive and i'm going to do the same thing and i always pay attention to the engagement and wide open throttle and right around 2000 put in neutral raise the rpm up 
the instructions for that I printed from all data say a thousand and I I just do a two thousand I like two thousand and you do this for 15 seconds and now let's go to drive two put it back into neutral 15 seconds at 2,000. And then let's go to drive one. And I'm gonna redo for reverse too because I didn't like how reverse was acting. Here we go. And then back into neutral. And rev this up. So my salt test is actually performing okay. Uh, if you look at the spec right here, uh, 2047 to 2379 uh, so with the 4.6 liter. So we're right there at the bottom uh, of this. I actually believe, you know, if it was like 1800, it's, we're still not having a problem because everything is holding. When you go above the stall speed, that's a real problem. And like I say, it's checking your torque converter clutch operation and installation. It's checking your forward clutch, your reverse clutch, your low reverse bands, your planetary one-way clutch, and your engine drivability uh, concerns. We have no drivability, so it's just checking this with the transmission. And if I had a really bad torque converter by the way and i should talk about this if we if the torque converter clutch was bad then our it would probably stall but we don't have a stalling problem so if it was like dropped where the car actually stalled then we're dealing with a locking up torque converter so if it's really low it's a torque converter if it's really high we're thinking one-way clutch we're thinking clutch packs or we're thinking bands Okay, let's do the reverse again. So I'm gonna go to reverse. I really don't like the way the reverse is engaging. And let's go wide open throttle. And, but it's still in spec. So uh, I do know that if we were to drive this car, it would eventually start slipping in forward gears. So we're on all data. I already picked a 2000 Ford uh, truck expedition. So I want to show you how we find that. We're going to go to transmission and drivetrain in the middle column here. Okay, then we're going to go to automatic transmission right here, which is a hyperlink. Okay, and then over here, we're going to go to, uh, uh, let's see, scroll down on the right column here, and we're going to go to testing and inspection and we're gonna do component tests and general diagnostics. And then we have a 4R70W uh, transmission in there. And then we have component tests. And then we wanna go down to a stall test. Now notice the shift linkage check case. Okay? So remember I told you we did that in addition to this always. So we're gonna do a stall test. Uh, and this is where we found the instructions that I was referring to, okay? And it says to hook up a tachometer. We don't have to do that. Um, it wants us to, in each of the following ranges, press the accelerator pedal to the floor and hold it long enough to let the engine get to wide open throttle. While making this test, do not hold the throttle open more than five seconds, like I said. After each range, move the shift control lever to neutral and you want to rev it for, I say, a, a 2,000 for 15 seconds. And then here's your... Uh, diagnostic chart right here so that is the stall test the next video we're going to be doing is a line pressure test and then we'll also be talking about um, shift uh, uh, speed um, uh, specifications as well so for the stall test i went to component tests and general diagnostics i mentioned that we're going to do shift speeds which is one of my favorite tests so I'm actually going to go down to initial inspection and diagnostic overview. And then I'm going to move up to 4R70W up here and then diagnostic strategies. And then this is where we find 
the shift point road test. So when should the vehicle shift, uh, depending on your throttle and your load conditions while doing a road test? So it's all about shift speeds, okay? And these are these will be another video I make, and we will talk about a diagnostic flow chart, which is what I'm. There's a sequence to what I'm doing, okay? And I'll, I'll finish with this. So the diagnostic flow chart is a simple yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and I'll include that in another video. But today's video was real simple. I wanted to go over a stall test.